With St. Patrick's Day around the corner, it's time to grab a stout and get cooking. Specifically, this hearty, slow-simmered Guinness stew and soda bread meal. Warming, filling, and of course, garnish with a proper touch of green. We're going to start off with about a three pound chuck roast here. Remove any large globs of fat that you don't want to eat and then go ahead and cube that into one and a half to two inch pieces. They're going to get nice and succulent and break down in our stew as we cook it for a couple hours. We'll season everything on the board with salt and fresh cracked pepper. And once it's nicely seasoned, we'll go ahead and grab a tablespoon or two of olive oil or canola oil, whatever you have on hand. Toss that into your Dutch oven or largest pot over medium high heat and brown your pieces of chuck roast. Don't overcrowd your pan. That is of course a sin, one which you would not want to commit on St. Patrick's Day of all days. Make sure you brown your meat on all sides so you get that nice dark golden brown color. Develop a nice rich fond on the bottom of your pot. Once all of your meat is nice and darkly brown like that, go ahead and set it aside and dice up three to four strips of bacon. I've also got three ribs of celery, one large white onion that I've diced, and three large carrots that I cut into bite-sized pieces. Add your bacon to the pot, and once it starts rendering its fat, add in your carrot, celery, and onions, and cook those out for five to seven minutes, breaking up that bacon and scraping up any of the fawn that you can off the bottom of your pot. Once those veggies start to get nice and soft and those onions go a little bit translucent, going to take about five to seven minutes. We'll add in three to four minced cloves of garlic. Go ahead and give that a stir. And then you can't have Guinness stew without Guinness beer. So I'm adding in about two and a half cups of a good old Guinness Irish stout. Give everything a stir. Now is when you can really scrape that fond off the bottom of the pot. Make sure you get all that great flavor up. Return all of your chunks of beef along with any accumulated juices, as you well know. And then we'll top this off with another two cups of chicken stock. You could use beef stock or even water in a pinch. I'm also gonna add in a couple tablespoons of tomato paste for umami flavors and richness, a bay leaf, and a few sprigs of fresh thyme. We can fish those out later. Go ahead and bring this up to a simmer, lid it up, and then cook for two and a half to three hours during which time we can turn our attention to our soda bread. Now what you're going to witness here is one of the great disasters in dishing out bread making, but it's all right because I'm going to quite literally stick with it. I put the proper ingredients and directions down below, but I'm gonna walk you through what I did wrong here. First of all, I uh, oversaturated my flour with the buttermilk, didn't have enough board flour to properly knead it, and just generally made a giant mess of things. But I persisted because honestly, I'm not one to waste three and a half cups of flour and one and a half cups of buttermilk, particularly not when I've taken the time to film it. So I continued to knead more flour into my dough until it was finally something resembling a proper soda bread dough. And then I very carefully and gingerly worked it onto a oiled baking sheet, baked it at 450 for about 15 to 20 minutes and then dropped the heat to 400 for another half an hour or so until it was done. How did I know it was done? Well, it was hideous, but it was at least 200 degrees right in the middle. And when I tested it with a toothpick, it came out nice and clean. After letting this rest for about half an hour, I decided to go ahead and slice into it and give it a taste test. And while it will not win any awards for uh, food photography, it tasted pretty doggone good. It had a nice, thick and dense crumb, very crunchy, crispy outside. And uh, I would definitely make this again. I would just maybe not screw up the dough part of it quite so badly in the beginning. Anyways, let's finish up this stew. After about two and a half or three hours, that beef should be incredibly succulent and tender, and our liquid has reduced slightly. We'll go ahead and fish out the thyme sprigs and any bay leaves that are in there, and then I'm gonna thicken this up with a one tablespoon of water and one tablespoon of cornstarch slurry. That part's optional. If you want it super thick, you can add more cornstarch or you can skip this all together. And then finally, with any long simmered soup or stew, I think it really needs some acidity and brightness right at the end. So I'm gonna splash in about a tablespoon or so of apple cider vinegar. 
Give that a stir to combine. You'll of course taste for seasoning, adding salt and pepper as needed. That bacon does have a lot of salt in it though, that's why we didn't add any with the veggies. And finally, we'll bowl this up. I'm gonna garnish it nice and simply with something green. Of course, this is St. Patrick's Day. Those are just diced celery leaves, which I chopped up. And we'll uh, tuck in a couple of slices of that nice, dense, crunchy soda bread. And while this isn't corned beef and cabbage, it is a pretty traditional Irish St. Patrick's Day meal, so let's give it a try. As you can see, that bread is dense. It's got a nice, thick outer crust. Has a nice chew to it. And honestly, kind of a funky flavor from that buttermilk. I'm definitely going to be making this again. I really enjoyed it. I give it a dunk in that Guinness stew. If you've never cooked with beer before, you are really missing out. Most of the alcohol cooks off and what you're left with is just a really intensely flavored, malty, slightly sweet, slightly tart stew. That beef is fatty and unctuous, but super tender. Those vegetables got really soft as they cooked out for three hours. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this off camera, but however you enjoy your St. Patrick's Day, I hope you will at least go and make something delicious.